Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with WIPB TV and Indiana Public Radio at Ball State University. Today we are chatting with Nick Duvall, Chief Advancement Officer and Senior Vice President of the Little Red Door Cancer Agency. Nick has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Nick, for joining us today. Well, thank you for having us. We really appreciate the opportunity to talk about the Little Red Door. So when one is confronted with a cancer diagnosis, whether it's it's, it's the person themselves or the family, and it does involve the entire family. It is a moment that is indelibly etched in the minds of anyone who has received such a diagnosis. Talk about how you help families going forward. Our whole goal is to help people battle through cancer um, with services that will get them to the best possible outcome for their health. And that will be rides back and forth to transportation, um, for chemotherapy and radiation treatments. That'll be nutritional supplements uh, for folks that are having trouble keeping on their weight. That'll be um, screening detection work for folks that are just worried that may not have insurance that need to have some detection work done for them. We also do a number of programs that are kind of informal psychosocial support at our organization. Um, and it's just one of those things where our navigators are really great at talking to somebody that has had their world really flipped upside down and understanding what needs, what things that they're gonna face and how to get those kind of needs met, how to make sure that they have the best possible outcome when a loved one or themselves are going through cancer treatment. What other programs do you have? So one of the big things we have right now is the transportation program. Last year in East Central India, we, we provided 2,000 rides back and forth to folks facing chemotherapy and radiation. And one of the things that we have found is a lot of our clients, the reason that they are referred to the Little Red Door is because they've missed an appointment. They haven't shown up at radiation or chemotherapy. And whenever that happens, they're in a crisis mode. And they don't understand that just one missed treatment could be could tip the scale, could go either way. And so that's one of the things that we want to remove that barrier that's out there for them. And we all come at this, unless we had a medical degree, we all come at this with a huge amount of ignorance and a lot of fear for so long in, and, and until uh, quite recently, the, a diagnosis of cancer came with a death sentence. Now there are treatment options for many, many types mm -hmm. of cancer that are much more textured and early detection is, is so important. Uh, how do you make sure that you are providing the types of services that the community needs as early as possible? Uh, having great partners, understanding having great board members and resources, partnering with folks like Ball Memorial Hospital, uh, understanding that our board uh, uh, goes through and we always are cognizant that the science is going to continue to change mm -hmm. and that we need to be really lean and make sure that our organization can meet those kind of demanding needs. Um, one of the great things is the navigators are always continually learning about the The navigators science. are those who help your cancer patients understand what is going on, what they might experience, what they can anticipate. They're the ones that um, initially speak with family members, friends, and really guide them to understand what resources are available to them, what resources they maybe haven't thought of, questions that maybe the family or loved ones haven't even gotten to that point to think of. You know, So that navigator is really, uh, I see them as a point guard in basketball, to use a sports analogy. They're the individual that's gonna get that ball, which is the best possible health outcomes to somebody and make sure that they put them in the right positions to get those source resources that they're gonna need. Your navigators come from a particular background. They have their own personal experiences. Um, talk about where they come from and, and what equips them mm -hmm. beyond your training to have these discussions with people who have received a diagnosis. Yeah, we've had several members on our team go through their own diagnosis. So that has been one of those things where until you've really experienced it, until you've had a loved one experience, you, you kind of don't know where to begin. You're almost in that shock phase. And so having somebody that's well-trained and understands what's gonna happen to you along the journey allows for you to feel a little more comfortable with them. I hate to, um, I always understate kind of the relationship with navigators and the clients, but it's one of, they become a family member. They become a loved one. And um, we'll have clients come into the organization all the time that are in past their treatment that are into remission and you know, they'll talk to their navigators like it's a daughter, like it's a close confidant, like it's their sister or brother. And it's a really special kind of bond that they form because they see themselves as kind of going through this together. And you're talking about volunteers who are giving up substantial uh, amounts of time. 
but in that in that um, that sacrifice of time, one also gets quite a bit. It, this is one of the most rewarding places I've ever been had a, the privilege of working at. Um, to see the look on people's faces once they understand that their loved one's well taken care of, that their loved one has is going to get the help that they need, it is kind of magical. One of the best programs that we get to see is our boutique services, where clients can come in and they can get a wig, a prosthetic if they have um, breast cancer, and they can get those wigs and those prosthetics free of charge from us. And when they do, from the time they go in to the time they come out is, is kind of an automatic transformation. We have so many of our clients tell us, I feel like myself again. I, I feel back to kind of where I was before cancer happened. And for us, that's always a really positive sign. Now you have your own experience. Uh, could you just talk about how you got involved in this? Because you're currently the chief advance, advancement officer and you're a senior vice president, but uh, you had a career before before the Little Red Door. Yeah, so my career path was really not gonna be a nonprofit service, but I got hooked. Um, my dad was actually a client of the Little Red Door here in Muncie. Diagnosed when I was 14, passed away when I was 20. And my family was the exact type of family that we target. It's those individuals that are have been working for a long time, they're making it paycheck to paycheck. And when cancer happens, they fall into a place where they're no longer self-sufficient. They can no longer pay the bills. They can no longer afford to do the things that they were doing before. And you know, my family, unfortunately, had that kind of instance. And the people at the Little Red Door helped us throughout the six-year journey. And without them, I, I often wonder what my outcome would have been for my family. My dad did pass away, but he was happy for a long time. He had great care. We started to help understand you know, what he needed because we could talk to our navigator and ask them what resources were available to and him. And you got to know him in, within that environment. You still got to know him. You got to grow up with mm -hmm. him. You got to benefit from, from who he was. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was huge. He, he instilled to me that kind of passion to give back. So Little Red Door was kind of responsible for my career. So when this happened and this position came available, I thought there's nothing that fits my career path better than going back into helping that same type of family, that same kid, that same father, that mother, that have those things kind of going on in their life. And that service for you is also a healing experience and an Absolutely. additive experience. You learn so much from people who have wisdom that you don't have and that have a perspective that you don't have. And from helping them, you're also developing yourself as a, as a human being. Oh, absolutely. I, I tell myself, you know, when I was 14 and my dad was diagnosed, my mom was, you know, had worked at Kroger's for uh, 20 years. We didn't understand the right questions to ask. We didn't understand how to, we were going to navigate through our insurance. We didn't understand how this was going to affect him in other ways. And the Little Red Door really helped us manage all that kind of stuff. Now, are you, are you asking for charity or are you asking for an investment? An investment, investment back into your community to make sure that we all become better together. And you're, and you're a, a great example of the return on that investment. As a member of society, whatever was given to your family, you and your family uh, continue to contribute to the health of Muncie mm -hmm. and, and literally to the health of Muncie. Most of the kids that fall into our situation where their parents don't have the kind of means to help them, you know, there were times that we really faced tough financial situations, they have bad outcomes. But because of the little red door, uh, I was able to go to college I have been able to work for a great organization. Both of my sisters now are highly successful. One is actually an oncology nurse that's practicing out in California right now. Um, my other sister, it works for a healthcare um, system as communications up in Wisconsin. And it's one of those things that I, I kind of always wonder where we would have been without the help of the Little Red Door. Um, how large is the organization? What is its budget? How many staff? How many volunteers? Yeah. So overall, we do have a large uh, organization, about 2.1 million. But here locally in East Central Indiana, it's about $300,000 is what we'll invest in the local communities here. And all the money that's raised here stays here. Um, we've been really fortunate to have really good supporters that have understood that. And each year we'll serve um, about 1,000 East Central Indiana folks um, that are facing cancer. About a thousand people, yeah. and how many volunteers do you have? Uh, we'll have about two or three hundred come through our doors uh, during the year, 
And each year, I mean, the services continue to grow out here. Last year, we were able and honored to be able to uh, provide 30,000 meals for folks with cancer treat going through cancer treatment. 30,000 meals. Yeah. And that's the thing that people have to have to realize with cancer treatment comes uh, loss of workday, um, uh, loss of income, uh, time is absorbed. Uh, people have to go through the ups and downs, both emotional and physical, of losing losing energy um, uh, as they go through treatment, and and they need help. I mean, it just it, it just is required. So y your nutritional supplement program is almost a misnomer because it's not. Sometimes it's not just a supplement. Sometimes it's just the necessity. It's a necessity for these folks, and it is, that is kind of a misnomer. Um, you know, these individuals come and. They usually are our clients. Uh, they pay nothing. Every service that we have at the Little Red Door is free of charge. It's all philanthropically funded here in the local community. And these individuals that come in, you know, they really do have to try to keep this weight on somehow. And oftentimes it's that decision that they will have to make between buying the nutritional supplements or making sure that your kids may have clothes to go to the school. Right. Making sure that they have lunch money. So anything we can do to kind of help offset the uh, burden for them is super important for us. What is the next next uh, step? And it's the evolution of the organization. What are you building out? What are you changing? What are you continuing? We always run everything through three filters for us. It's always, does it help more people with cancer? Mm -hmm. uh, does it make fiscal sense? So scale, financial yeah. strength. And are we uh, doing the best work possible with the gifts that we're given? Are we being good stewards of the gifts that were uh, have been bestowed upon us? And so for us, I think the next... Um, step in our evolution is seeing what other communities we may be able to partner with, whether that's maybe Terre Haute, Indiana, Richmond, some of those outside Oregon uh, counties, outside of Marion and just Muncie uh, area. And particularly as you move into the more rural uh, uh, areas of the state, those services are so vital because they're so difficult to access and there's the physical distance can also mean that, that knowledge is, is not transferred as readily. Yeah, so, I mean, myself, I, um, my father was about 30 minutes from his treatment facility, so every time my mom had to take him back and forth to work, there was a day that she would have missed treat, she would miss work. Every day that he needed to go get um, supplies that for the uh, cancer that he was facing, she had to take off work and go help him. So for us and these folks that are in these rural communities, we understand that there is a big burden to be able to uh, shoulder, and we just want to be able to help that. Well, Nick Duval, thank you so much for sharing the work of Little Red Door Cancer Agency, so important to the community, and thank you so much for your insights. Thank you for having us. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to maybe having another conversation soon.